Hello fellow Val Warriors, I am Zardar and welcome. So today we have some news about the upcoming DLC for Warhammer 2, The Prophet and the Warlock. It's not actually named the, uh, the Rat and the Serpent, which was uh, what everybody was expecting it to be. So uh, we got some news, uh, excuse me if I'm not good at that, it's actually the first time that I'm uh, doing any of this. And uh, it's just because I happened to see it on Twitter almost immediately. I got all the info spread out all over here. We're just gonna see the trailer in case you didn't uh, see it. If you did, just uh, feel free to just skip a few minutes later, like two. Okay, I'm just gonna set up now. So let's go a little bit back. I want to see, for example, over here we've seen some uh, machine guns for the uh, Skaven. Let me... Okay, where is it? Yeah, this guy is definitely carrying one. Uh, I, I don't want to play, I just want to pose. Over here, where was it? We saw some Thunderers and uh, if I'm actually correct, I've seen these units on the tabletop, like one Skaven carrying the shield uh, and one Skaven just uh, manning the handgun. Uh, where is it? Yeah, they're over here. One is actually manning the handgun and the other one is holding the shield down. And uh, what else? I, didn't th I don't think I saw anything else uh, from the Skaven. I might have missed something. Of course, we have the new uh, kind of lord, generic lord over here. Uh, okay, probably this guy is going to be a unique lord from Clan Scryer. Uh, which is gonna be the playable new faction but uh, yeah we're probably gonna get like uh, generic lords as well for the lizardmen we saw uh, a new slant mage over here uh, so i guess the slant mages uh, the skinks are gonna be uh, not slant skinks skinks excuse me uh, the skinks are gonna finally we're gonna get a generic skink uh, lord because uh, i just didn't like having only, only slant mages uh, over here, I think we can see some new Doom Wheels for the Skaven, kind of like a Doom Wheel. Um, I don't know how this is gonna work out. Like, the Doom Wheel on its own was like overpowered, not overpowered, like it was a strong unit on its own. Like, what's the point of adding more chariots into the field, kind of uh, Doom Wheel type? But uh, they know better, I guess. Uh, <laughs> see these new lizards over here which are gonna be used most likely as an anti-infantry unit uh, kind of like a mongol from the uh, vampire coast I, exp I expect them to be anti-infantry because they kind of make sense like uh, this lizard is gonna be like it's gonna be hard for it to fight large targets it's it makes more sense so they're gonna be anti-infantry we can also see some pterodactyls uh, I mean the new flying units I don't know what's their name 
Uh, yeah, there they are. Uh, I'm probably gonna see it over here. Just uh, give me a few seconds. And um, yeah, that's pretty much all. We can see some unique abilities being dropped. I don't know if they're gonna add this just for the campaign or the multiplayer as well. For example, like the Tomb Kings have the uh, the Usapti Summon. Um, we'll have to we'll have to see this one. So let's go over here. This is the Steam page. You can actually buy this one for relatively a cheap price, which I'm gonna do just uh, in a few seconds as soon as I end the video. Uh, it says over here, two powerful new legendary lords with new quest chains, legendary items and skill trees. Yeah, exactly. Play as Clan Scryre for the Skaven or the Cult of Sotek for the Lizardman with uh, unique new campaign mechanics. Uh, two new additional lord types, I told you. So uh, this is gonna be uh, lit. I, I really like to see, I would really like to see freaking Skinks Priests as uh, lords. Nine new battlefield units and variants including the bullet spewing rattling gun weapon teams and the fearsome Reaper Dactyl. Okay, that's their name, Reaper Dactyls. Okay, that makes sense. Unleash ultimate devastation with the clan scryer Doom Rocket or summon an aspect of the very serpent god himself into battle with the invocation of Sotek. So uh, this, um, I don't know, if, if it's balanced, I don't mind having it on the multiplayer scene, but um, we'll have to see. It will definitely be on the campaign. Uh, who knows about multiplayer? New regiments of renown to unlock, recruit and fill background. It's just uh, uh, some generic information about uh, the lore. And over here we've got a schedule, which is gonna be the ever chosen tournament in um, what day is it today? I totally got them forgot. Yeah, uh, it's what is it? Ah, it's Thursday. Okay, sorry, I just completely completely messed up. So Saturday, it's gonna be day one for the Ever Chosen. It's gonna last about four to five hours, uh, which it usually does, from uh, taking into account the older ones. Uh, the finals are gonna be on Sunday, and uh, we have we are gonna have a total world live uh, the quest for Croak on Wednesday, 10th of April, from 3 B uh, p.m. BST to uh, it doesn't say. I guess it's gonna be just for a couple of hours. And on Wednesday, 17th of April, which is gonna be the release date, is gonna be a mega stream which is gonna last all day. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, so yeah, this is the schedule, road to release uh, streaming schedule. And uh, lastly over here we get uh, the F F A FAQ, which is gonna be some uh, lore information up here. The campaign pack, we've already read this on the uh, Steam page, it's, it's the same. Uh, for full details on all you'll get in this Lord pack, head over to Steam to read more. Actually, I read more over here than I actually read on Steam, but whatever. Um, when will the Prophet and the Warlock be released? On uh, Wednesday, 17th of April, Wednesday. Um, okay, is there a pre-purchase discount? There's gonna be a 10% 10% uh, discount if you order pre-order it, which uh, is kind of nice, always. Uh, will the new legendary lord be fighting for control of the vortex? I actually care about that. Both Techenhound and Ikit. Oh, so these are the names for the lords. This is probably the Skaven one. This is probably the Lizardman one because, yeah, it, it actually sounds lizard. This will fight for the control of the great vortex with their new unique faction mechanics, which can be experienced in both this campaign and Mortal Empires. Okay, that's that's nice. Will the new legendary lords be available in the both? The Eye of the Vortex and the Mortal uh, Mortals campaign, Empire Mortal Empires campaign. Yes, both are gonna be in both. Uh, what new units will there be in the Prophet, uh, Prophet and the Warlock? There will be new units to bolster both the Lizardman and Skaven lineups. For full information with specific with specific units, check out the Prophet and the Warlock Steam page. Okay, I'm gonna check that again, but I didn't see anything. What's the free content that will be released? Okay, this is something that a lot of people actually care about. We have a lot of free content in the chamber that will be available to everyone who owns Total War Warhammer 2, regardless of whether you buy the Prophet and the Warlock. There's never been a better time to go back and play the game, especially if you're a Skaven or a Lizardman fan. I'm, I'm definitely a freaking Skaven fan, especially on the campaign. Yes, there will be new free legendary lord to play as, but also coming alongside uh, this DLC will be the Doomslayers update for all players. A refresh of the Skaven and Lizardman factions with an overhaul of Bretonia in the Mortal Empires campaign. This, com uh, this update could easily be our most extensive yet, so uh, quite thankful about that for CA for actually fixing Bretonia alongside these two factions. 
We'll be getting into the details soon, but here's a quick taster of what's in store for both Bretonia as well as a, uh, an Insidious new feature, the Skaven Under Empire. The Under Empire is a new feature coming to all Skaven Legendary Lords on the Prophet and the Warlock release date. Following the release of the Vampire Cost faction, we saw a lot of fans calling out for something similar for the Skaven, and we listened. The, the Pirate Covers mechanic in Curse of the Vampire Cost laid the foundations for this feature, but it's more in depth and allows all Skaven factions to build a secret base of operation known as an undercity deep beneath any settlement through conquest or use of agent actions. So that's freaking great, finally, because this is what the people have been asking for since uh, Warhammer 1, because the Skaven have uh, lures under almost every empire city, almost every city on the map. So uh, being able to uh, have that either through agent actions or through conquest is going to be amazing. And uh, I don't get it why they implemented that first with the Vampire Cost and not the Skaven if they had the uh, the engine the engine uh, allowed to do so. Once it's established, a whole host of building options will be available including wealth, resources and corruption buildings. Under cities also support the ability to either summon a verminous army to rise up and attack the settlement above. Oh my god, that's gonna be so overpowered. If you're playing as Clan Scryer to detonate a Doomsphere device, which if not detected, can blow the settlement above to ruins. Oh dear lord. Ah, remaining hidden is key to developing the Under Empire to its fullest, but with its addition uh, to the tunnels and warrants, um, and warrants the risk of being spotted grows even greater. So the, the bigger you become, uh, the more noticeable you will be. Uh, I'll have to, it has to be specified though, if I get like a lot of layers under, for example, the Empire, will the Empire be able to see me or just get random layers all over the place, everybody's gonna be able to see me. Uh, what I'm asking is, will the specific faction that I'm setting up the layers gonna be able or just everybody? Uh, we'll have to see, if, if spotted under cities can be of course, destroyed, a little bit of rat poison goes a long way by those that rule the settlements above ground. Discovering whether a verminous nest lies beneath a settlement can be achieved through the construction of specific buildings, deploying heroes in close proximity to search for the ratmen or for the skaven to blow their cover by building too much. This makes the Under Empire a truly cat and mouse feature where settlement owners above ground can be blissfully unaware of the activity below <laughs> until it's too late. Oh my god, I'm gonna have so much fun. Just blowing stuff up. Although, god damn it, why do I play all there? You can't, uh, you can't um, <clears throat> take pleasure from mechanics like that because on legendary you don't want to destroy the enemy settlements. You want to capture them as uh, high level as possible, so you can just keep going. Yeah, it's a different, a whole different experience between normal uh, or legendary. So yeah, some mechanics that kind of seem fun on legendary are just yeah, just don't ever touch it. So uh, we'll see. Hopefully, it's not gonna be like that, but. Um, let's wait. Additionally, all lizard and legendary lords will be able to unlock a quest chain to see out Lord Croak, the last of the first generation slan. Oh, Croak, that's nice. I, I, I remember that. I, I've, I've seen a video about uh, him. I think uh, Italian Spartacus did that. Uh, although technically dead, his spirit remains and still exert, exerts its power over the living world. Once Croak is found, he will join the player's faction as an immortal hero, boasting a completely unique skill tree and devastating campaign map abilities. Okay, so if this uh, if this is the unique ability of the uh, Lizardman and it says here that it's gonna be on the campaign map abilities, probably the Skaven ability is gonna be on the campaign map also. Only, not on uh, multiplayer battle. That's That's what I get from this one. It can't be like this ability is gonna be only on the campaign and the Skaven can only be uh, can be on both. Like it, it doesn't make sense. What's in the free uh, old world update that will be released alongside the DLC? Bretonia will be getting a number of updated features. One of these is the Vow system available to all Bretonian legendary lords, uh, lords, prophetesses, and paladins. Replacing the existing Vow skills, each character will need to pledge themselves to a Vow and undertake a task to demonstrate their devotion. Upon taking up their pledge, the character will receive a trait linked to the conditions of the task, which could be anything from defeating enemies in battle to constructing certain, certain buildings in their home region. Upon a completion of the, task, uh, of the task, the vow will be granted and the character will be able to progress on to subsequent vows. Once completed, each vow will grant the character a selection of buffs and benefits such as upkeep reductions, for specific units, increased armor, or even immortality. 
Beyond the brand new Valve system, Bretonia have also received a lot of other updates which will include. So before we uh, go to the next one, what I get from this is just you're gonna get um, um, unique uh, quest battles, minor quest battles. Pretty much when you play uh, Warhammer and you start with uh, raise two or more settlements uh, and then you get a, a reward, then it's, it rises to... Uh, loot on or, or occupy or raise four settlements. This is gonna be something like that. You're just gonna be getting mini uh, mini quests for uh, probably every lord that it says up here. Uh, but it's gonna be diverse. It's gonna be either build that building, either uh, recruit that unit, and so the vows are gonna I don't know uh, increase or whatever the uh, vow skills. So, uh, that's what I get from this. Uh, yeah, new technologies for the uh, Bretonia. That's Pretty damn great. A new trident of Manan weapon for... Uh, yes! Freaking yes! Freaking yes! That's that's what I was waiting for. Uh, I hope they mean visually. Like, because uh, he already holds a trident and he has a skill. But it's not visually present. But I take it that it doesn't say anything else. That it's actually like a visible tat. Uh, visual. A new confederation dilemma. Okay, that's actually quite nice. Because it was super easy. All Bretonian Lords can start the game mounted in campaign by default. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's Bretonia. Like, they have free horses, these dudes. Like, it doesn't make sense to start on foot. Free, free peasant mob upkeep when not exceeding the peasant economy gap. Oh, really? That's, that's gonna be great. That's gonna change a lot. Like, having all of the uh, peasants free when remaining within the cap, which from what I remember from my uh, Bordello campaign, because I've only played as Bordello, it's quite easy if you know what to do to keep it under the cap, and you actually want to, otherwise you're gonna get struck with uh, terrible penalties. So that's gonna be great. General Bretonian garrison improvements, that was definitely needed. The Bretonian garrisons were just the worst of the worst. It sucked, like... I, I get it, Bretonia is a freaking uh, cavalry uh, faction, but it doesn't make sense in a settlement to have more cavalry, cavalry than actually uh, freaking uh, foot squires or anything like that. Increased turn duration for the Green Knight, okay, unlimited Green Knight uses when reaching level 5 of the Civilry Bar. When will the free content be available? The same day as the uh, DLC, will the Prophet and the Warlock be released on Macos, uh, Max, uh, whatever, and Linux? Uh, I, we don't care about that. Well, if you do. There's gonna be uh, a release shortly after the 17th. So uh, let's go back here. It says if you wanna see more about the new units, you should go over here. But I have no idea where to go to see that. Like um, perhaps here we can see the Warlord for the Skaven. We can see that new kind of new Doom Wheel. Uh, this is gonna be probably the Skink Generic Lord. Kind of, I guess. Uh, Skink uh, Priest, Lord, Slash Lord. Uh, these are the uh, the new Lizard's uh, Monstrous Unit, <clears throat> which from what I understand, it's gonna be like uh, anti-infantry. Uh, I don't know about armor piercing. Okay, there's more, where is it? Why can I not see more? Okay, so it's not here. Um, mm, I don't see anything. Why do you tell me to go here to see the new units? Is it down here? Nope. Oh, it's it's right here. So, Warp Storm Doom Rockets. We already saw that. Uh, or didn't we? Oh, uh, that's the army ability. Doom Sphere. Uh, that's the uh, the Lurs. Yeah, that's the Lurs. Unique Lord Warlock Master. Unique Units. Okay, this is where we need to go. Rattling Gun Weapons Team, Specialist Anti-Infantry Guns Teams uh, bearing the rotating rapid rattling gun, uh, which is this one, okay. Uh, Warplock Gisels, Long Range Armor Piercing Sniper Infantry, oh my god, there's gonna be some sniping involved for Lords or Entities, single Entities. Uh, these Sharpshooters have the highest quality shield, so I guess silver or even gold. And their projectiles... Is there like gold seals on uh, Warhammer 2? I haven't noticed. And their projectiles confer the seal breaker contact effect. Okay, I get it. Doom flyers. Really? Flayers. Okay. 
yeah, it, 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 escape and have nothing to do with flying. Smaller than Doom Wheel and twice as messy, Doom Flayers are designed to punch through enemy lines and deal powerful armor piercing damage. So I guess the, it's gonna be like a numerous uh, unit, like uh, having like five Doom Flayers in one unit instead of just one single entity, which is the Doom Wheel, probably something like that. Uh, regiments of Renown, these unique, uh, unique elite variants are unlocked for recruitment as Ikit Glow, Glow and his lords level up. He gets Zap Zap, a Warp Lightning Cannon, okay, that's gonna be a re Regiment of Renown, a unique one. Um, which says here, these arcane artillery pieces stun their enemies with the Zap contact effect, increasing the target's ability cooldown times. Clan Vukln Tail Slashers, Clan Rats with Seals, Fiery Vermin with high weapon strength who deal flaming attacks while being immune to the effects of flame weapon themselves, so fire weapon uh, damage. Of these guys. Blight Scabs Plague Pack, Plague Monk Sensor Bearers, okay. Heed the Ward, Blight Scabs Plague, uh, Plague Pack have the Demagoguery ability, granting immune to psychology attribute to nearby friendly units. Okay, that's gonna be amazing. Uh, that unit is gonna be a must against, uh, for example, at least the undead factions, so you can negate all of that uh, fear and terror. Teeth Breakers, Rattling gun weapons team. Uh, the sneaky shooters carry concealment bombs, granting them stock and unspotable at a moment's notice. That's excellent. Cancel guard, storm vermin with halberds. Ooh, drilled in the protection of their masters. The cancel guard are unbreakable and have the guardian ability. Okay, that's that's gonna add a lot of help to the Skaven roster. This guy's protecting scroll or any other lord that's just gonna be impossible to break through and if you buff them with poison I think they're gonna be like uh, almost a must for every uh, army setup. Nadis Bubo's Sharpshooters Warplock Gezales, <clears throat> the ultimate sniper crew. Nadis Bubo's Sharpshooters have both the stock and the snipe abilities. No, but uh, snipe means even if they shoot they cannot be seen. Dwarf Thing Menace, Doom Flares, uh, there's gonna be such so much trolling with these guys like dear lord. You're gonna need, uh, need a lot of cavalry <laughs> with the freaking uh, with every faction where you're playing against as Caven, because you need to find these guys really fast. Dwarf Thing Menace, Doom Flayers, perfect for scything through Dowie armor. The Dwarf Thing Menace has the standard armor contact effect and causes fear. Okay, that's great. Wheels of Doom, uh, ooh, a regiment of renown. Doom Wheel fires extra powerful missiles, which confer the discard contact uh, contact effect. On their target, excellent demoralizing effect. Five additional uh, additional regiments of renown will become available upon completion of key projects in the Forbidden Workshop. These units are only available in campaign, not in custom and multiplayer battles. Uh, does that mean? Yeah, they're just gonna come in later. Warp fires will doom will an augmented doom will with improved melee stats and the regeneration attribute. Are these things gonna come on multiplayer? It doesn't. Uh, I don't. I don't get it. Five additional regiments of renown will become available upon completion of key projects in the Forbidden Workshop. These units are only okay. They're only for the campaign, so they're like something like a blessed spawns or something like that. Black hole flares. Uh, these enhanced doom flares have improved melee stats and cause fear. Doom bringers warp fire. Throw weapons team with increased melee stats and the unbreakable attribute. This warp fire throw weapons team can target other units in melee if attacked. Eye takers warp lock Gisales. Headshot the eye takers enhanced Gisales did increased damage and blind their targets, reducing their accuracy, melee attack, and melee defense. Death dealers rattling gun weapons team. The rattling gun pr perfected. These weapons teams will fire. Their hells of bullets at a longer range, dealing greater damage and with a re uh, reduced reload times. Excellent. Oh, this is actually the Prophet of Sotek, Tehen Hawin. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, okay, I said that before, but okay, whatever. So this is gonna be the Prophet of Sotek for the Lizardmen with Clan of Sotek. Cult, excuse me. Uh, it says some uh, generic uh, lore info over here. Prophecy of Sotek believes that the... With sufficient sacrifices, the Serpent God may yet return. Okay, that's the unique abilities. Sacrifices to Sotek as Tehen Nawin and his forces win battles against non lizardman armies. They may choose to mark any post-battle captives as sacrificial offerings. So, post-battle loot is gonna have to do with the sacrifices. The ultimate sacrifice, Invocation of Sotek. This is where you set it off. 
Unique Lord, Red Crested Skin Chief. Unique Lord. Okay, that's not a generic Lord. Okay, that's that's great. Red Crested Skin Chiefs are powerful melee focused Lords capable of leading armies with their unique skills uh, skills tree. They may be upgraded to ride a horn one, a Reaper Dactyl, and later a fearsome ancient Stegodon. Okay, that's pretty damn great. Unique units. Um, Tehem uh, Nowins armies may recruit and fill all new battlefield units. Red Crested Skinks armed with great weapons. Red Crested Skinks deal armor piercing damage moving at a tremendous pace. They are well equipped to swiftly outflank the enemy and strike from the side or rear. Salamander Hunting Pack powerful ranged attack monsters that har hurl fireballs, deal flaming attacks in melee and cause fear. Their high speed enables them to reposition swiftly in the battlefield. Ancient Salamander, a vast and venerable salamander that hurls huge fireballs dealing high damage and making the target more vulnerable to further flame attacks. The Ancient Salamander also deals flaming attacks in melee and causes terror. Great, Reaper Dactyl Riders, flying anti-infantry cavalry ridden by skinks dealing powerful armor piercing damage in melee. Ooh, okay, that's nice. Uh, are they not gonna be missiles? Missile unit? Probably not, okay. Ancient Stegodon, Engine of the Gods, a variant of the mighty Stegodon mounted with the Engine of the Gods which can use the burning alignment of beam attack and the potent of warding to protect nearby friendly units. Okay. Uh, Bastilodon Arc of Sotek, a Bastilodon mounted with the Arc of Sotek, able to summon a with uh, a wreathing, wreathing vortex of poison dealing serpents around itself in combat. And these are the regiments of renowned Tena. Taken a house uh, or whatever, armies may fill all new regiments of renown. These are unlocked for recruitment as the appropriate sacrifices are made to Sotek. The Thunderous One, Ancient Stegadon Regiment of Renown, armed with Judgment of Zakmak uh, ability. The Thunderous One calls down bolts of lightning to strike enemies, engaging it in melee. Okay, so that's gonna be like a defensive ability when uh, Set hits the fan. And he gets swarmed, that's kinda good. Star Chamber Guardians, Temple Guards, oh my god, yeah. Even more overpowered Temple Guards. These venerable warriors have expert charge, defense, magic attacks, and the Guardian attributes. Oh my god, these are gonna be present in every matchup. Protecting Islam, Mage, uh, Mazda Mundi, or anybody else. I think these, these guys are gonna be excellent. Colossodon Hunters, Ripper Dactyl Riders, Expert Monster Fighters. Uh, the Colossodon Hunters have the bonus vs large ability, okay, that's kind of good. Uh, Pop Hopak cohort called one Spear Riders. The Pop Hopak, damn it, cohort do not have the Primal Instinct trait. Okay, that's excellent. And they're gifted with both Vanguard deployment and immune to psychology attributes. Okay, an excellent anti-large unit from what I can tell. Legion of Chakwa, Soros Spears. These legendary Soros warriors have the Shield of Chakwa ability granting significant missile resistance to nearby friendly units. Missile resistance. Okay. Uh, the Umbral Tide, Salamander Hunting Pack, Tireless and Stealthy. The Umbral Tide have both the stock and the perfect vigor attributes. Okay. Uh, okay, let's go back to this. Uh, this these units, these source warriors will be excellent defending against highly missile units like freaking high elves, wood elves, and things like that. You just keep these guys close to your, <clears throat> for example, your slam mates, and they're gonna be protecting him from the uh, missile fire. That's, that's gonna be great. Cohort of Sotek, Red Crested Skinks, Grizzled Veterans, the Cohort of Sotek are unbreakable and have the Refuse to Die ability which temporarily halts their hit points loss in battle. Really? Okay, so this guy, these guys are gonna be something like uh, the 8 pick Lunis from what I can tell for the uh, Lizardmen. Pahwax Sentinels, Pterodon Riders, these agile winged warriors have the Dodge attribute conferring 20% physical resistance and drop rocks of Sundering temporarily reducing their target's armor. Okay, a flying from above, um, uh, yeah, whatever, from uh, for uh, sundering the armor. Okay, that's that's gonna be uh, quite great. And um, this is gonna be it, I guess. So, um, this, this really sounds like a fun DLC so far. Like, I really like the touch, I really like the new units from what I can see. Obviously, there's a lot more, there's just not goddamn enough pictures. As you can uh, hover over here, um, we got a fantastic trailer on this side. Um, we got a nice schedule. I really, 
Uh, I'm, I'm really expecting for this uh, to see how it's gonna be both the ever chosen invitational and also the live streams and uh, here the Q&A uh, not Q&A FAQ is uh, quite um, quite helpful but most of it is this one so if you don't know which units that are gonna be present it's all here on the Steam page you just have to uh, uh, hit so more uh, somewhere where is it yeah it went down somewhere here whatever so guys uh, I, I just want to hear your thoughts so please tell me what you think uh, but also uh, your thoughts about the DLC the free LC about Britonia and also the thoughts about me doing this because it's the first time I've actually tried it and honestly I have no idea how to start what to say which order to present uh, the facts uh, I hope I did at least a decent job uh, being a first timer so yeah any uh, any advice will be uh, welcome so I really hope you enjoyed anything you want to say just feel free to comment down below um, also feel free to subscribe and hit that notification button and yeah I'm gonna be seeing you um, next time bye bye